part three of how to use your VA loan while on active duty by someone on active duty. This segment, we're going to cover what to do after we get you pre-approved, develop a strategy so you can get an offer accepted, as well as creating a priority list of wants and needs so you don't get the paralysis by analysis syndrome. And lastly, what you need to do to submit an offer like proof of funds and earnest money deposit. This video is a really important part of the process, and if followed correctly, it will save you a ton of pain and agony, so really pay attention. If you didn't see part one and two, go back and watch it before you watch this one. I'll link it somewhere in the description or put it up somewhere over here. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to follow me on Instagram for more real estate tips and tricks. Also, if you have any specific questions or topics that you'd like me to cover, just leave a comment below or shoot me a message on Instagram. So we're about one to two months out from when you want to buy your home. You already went to the lender and they pre-approved you for whatever amount. Now we have a budget, so off to looking at homes, right? Nope, we need to figure out a strategy first. Remember when I talked about saving up for the closing costs to be competitive? This is where it comes into play. If you haven't, then we need to go after properties that have been on the market for a while so we have some leverage when we ask them for closing costs in our offer. If you did, we're good to go. And now we can focus on locations that appeal to you. San Diego is incredibly complex, but I'll show you an overview of what your money can get you in different locations. And you can decide what's most important to you. For example, being close to work or having a yard. Being in a walkable distance to restaurants and all that, or being in a better school district. My advice is to sit down and write out all your wants, then separate what your needs are. Once you figure out what your wants and needs are, number them starting with the most important down to the least. Let me be clear, set expectations that other realtors might not tell you. You're not gonna get everything you want unless you qualify for over a million dollars. And on our government salary, that's just not gonna happen. But in order for you to someday get that dream home that does have everything you want, you have to start somewhere. So our goal is to find a home where we can get the most of your wants and needs and the ones highest on your priority list. For example, say we find something that's close to base and has a backyard but doesn't have three bedrooms. That's a home we should move forward on if being close to base and having a backyard with time and priority list. What I see happen all the time is clients try to hold out hoping for the perfect property to pop up and believe me, they never do. They'll end up looking for six months or more and in that time, homes have just gotten more expensive. So to get all that out of the way, just focus on the list and don't get the grass is greener syndrome. Next, so you remember when I said a lender is vitally important and I don't recommend Veterans United? Here's why. My lender can close a VA loan in 14 to 17 days. That means we can write in the offer that we expect to go through the entire thing in two weeks, as opposed to the normal 30 days. Now put yourself in the seller's shoes. Say they have two VA offers for the same amount. One's with Veterans United and needs 30 days to close, and the other one you put in 14 days. Which one is the seller going to choose? Exactly, the one that pays them the fastest. This is just another way to make your offers more attractive and to strategically beat out the other military offers that you're going to counter. Because let's face it, there's 100,000 of us in San Diego. You're more than likely going to have to compete with other active duty in your same situation. So this is the main reason why I don't recommend Veterans United. In the solar market, maybe, but just not out here. The other reason is that although San Diego is a big place, the real estate world just isn't. If I see an offer from a lender that I know is professional from working with before, that communicates great during escrow, I want to inform my client that I know escrow will go through on time, inspections are already probably ordered, and it's going to be as smooth as silk, which is something all sellers want. So I'm going to get into escrow and all that next week. Let's just suffice to say, choosing the right lender can definitely get your offer accepted, sometimes even when it's not the highest one. Fast forward, we find a home you really like and you want to put an offer on. In order to do that, I'll need a couple of things. Most importantly being proof of funds. Proof of funds can literally be a picture of your account showing that you have enough money to cover whatever we put in the offer, like earnest money deposit and closing costs if you were going to pay for it. The earnest money deposit or good faith deposit shows that you are serious about purchasing the home. And if you decide to just back out for no reason, the seller to keep that money. There's normally between one and 3% of the purchase price. Now it's not mandatory and you don't have to do it. But in San Diego, if you don't submit an EMV, then your offer won't even be looked at because this market is so competitive that it's almost become a standard. After we close escrow, that money goes towards your closing costs or back to you if we negotiate that the seller covers closing costs. Now, this doesn't mean that if we find something during escrow that we can't just pop smoke and back out of it. It's just saying that you're a serious buyer and you won't just change your mind last minute for no reason. All right, that's enough for today. So far, we've got you pre-approved and we have an offer submitted. Next week, I'll go over negotiations, what we do in escrow in order to protect you, but also ensure that you don't do something that makes us fall out of escrow and start this whole thing back over. And of course, closing, when you finally get back at your keys and you're in your home. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Like this video if you learned something. Subscribe if you found any sort of value and want more videos just like this.